Hi guys, great to see you again. I would like to share the following Babok technique with you. Interviews. So all of us would probably have done some interviews in the past. I suggest we look at it systematically as the Babok describes it, and I'm sure every one of us will learn something new. All right, let me share my screen with you. Great. So let's have a look at interviews. According to the Babbock Guide, it's a systematic approach designed to elicit business analysis information from a person or a group of people by talking to the interviewee or interviewees, asking relevant questions and documenting the responses. So it's important at this point to see that an interview doesn't necessarily have to be a one-on-one. -on -one. It could be an interviewer that has a group of people that's being interviewed. So there are basically two different types of interviews that we tend to be, um, conduct. The first is structured interviews and the second unstructured interviews. So the difference here is that with a structured interview, You've got predefined questions and a specific format that you're following, and it's quite a formal interview. And then the unstructured interview is more of a conversation where you just follow the, the trail of the conversation to get to some kind of output in the domain of what you're looking for. So it's not a predefined set of questions. It's more of a free flow conversation. Now, you would probably agree with me if I say, we tend to do a bit of a mix of structured and unstructured interviews, where we do start with a set of questions, but sometimes the conversation flows into directions that you may not have planned for. And as long as that's still <clears throat> in scope and still kind of following the goal of the interview, of course, that is then a really good way to explore more information. Okay, so let's have a look at the next aspect of interviews. Let's now have a look at the success factors that helps you to make a success of an interview. One of the success factors is the level of domain understanding by the interviewer. So if you are the interviewer and you don't necessarily have a lot of domain understanding, Perhaps you could ask a domain subject matter expert to accompany you to an interview. This will help you to be successful. The experience of the interviewer. Again, with this, you may not have that much experience. So it's not a bad idea to take a more senior business analyst with you to perhaps help and guide through your first few interviews. The skill of the interviewer to document discussions. Now, we all like to think that we've got really good memories and we'll remember everything, but we actually tend to forget the details reasonably quickly. So instead of having to run back to your interviewee to clarify and remind you of what was said, try to develop a skill where you can document and record what is being said as you go. And this might be another place where you can use a mind map to document your interview in a quick and visual way. Readiness of the interviewee to provide information. So this factor is important. So if you can maybe pre-warn your interviewee about the topics and the types of information that you'll be after during the interview, this could help you to um, have a successful interview. The degree of clarity in the interviewee's understanding of the goal of the interview. Again, this would be good if, if you could make sure that your interviewee understand why you are there and what it is you would like to achieve. So be clear in your expectation setting. And then, of course, Probably one of the most important aspects of making the interview really successful is the rapport that you build with the interviewee. So make a point of getting to know your interviewee and building strong rapport. Right, so now let's have a look 
What are the elements of interviews as a technique in the Babel Guide? So I'll run through these quickly and then we can discuss each of them in more detail. So first of all, the interview goal, potential interviewees, interview questions, interview logistics, um, interview flow, and the interview follow-up. So these are the six elements that you need to consider when you apply this technique. Let's now look at the first one, the interview goal. So basically, this is about you doing some work up front to determine the overall purpose of performing a set of interviews. So you need to be clear about why do you want to do the interviews and what are you hoping to achieve? And then to break that down in point two, to have a very specific goal for every single interview so that you can communicate this goal to your interviewee. And then of course, yes, point three, it's about communicating the goals for each interview to your interviewees. So that's what this element is all about. The second one is about identifying basically who will be your interviewees. So who are those stakeholders that you need to go and set up interviews with? And often it's a good idea to run this past your project team, but this will also form part of your BA approach and it will be part of your stakeholder analysis. So it's all kind of coming together in who will be interviewed and why certain people would be selected for interviews. Okay, so the next element, interview questions. Now, it's important to remember that the questions really depends on the goal. Um, there are different types of questions and it's good to be aware of these. So you get open-ended questions and you get closed questions. Now, the open-ended questions are basically those types of questions where somebody has to describe something back to you. Um, whereas a closed question would be a yes, no type answer. So open-ended questions are really good if you need someone to explain steps of a process or some more descriptive information about why something is the way it is in order to help your elicitation efforts. Now then, there are some different ways that you can frame questions um, in preparation. And you could have questions that is start to finish type questions. So these are questions where, for example, you ask the interviewee to explain a process from the beginning to the end to you. You could also have detail to summary level questions. So these are more about having chunking up of your questions. So higher level, broader questions that you ask versus specific detailed questions. So this is where it's important to use the right language in framing those questions. And then prioritize topics driven questions. Sometimes you might only have half an hour with a particular stakeholder um, that you would like to run through specific topics with. So make sure that you start with the most or the highest priority topics to make sure that you at least get those covered as part of your interview. And then of course, it depends on, your questions could depend on the knowledge that the interviewee has. So sometimes somebody might be a payroll expert. So you might be working on a broader program for the whole of human resources. So you will go and just talk about the payroll aspects in your interview with the payroll expert. So sometimes if you've got a big elicitation um, effort going on and one of your primary techniques will be interviews, that is actually then a good idea to develop an interview guide. And this just standardizes some of the questions and some of the responses that you'll be receiving. Okay, so let's have a look at the next element. So the interview logistics. 
of course, this is also quite an important one to consider in your planning um, activities of interviews. And they are things like, so where will the interview be held? Will it be virtual, just like having a Zoom session? <clears throat> or will it be a physical location where you visit somebody in their office? Will the session be recorded? And should you send the questions to the interviewee in advance? So this is sometimes a really useful idea um, to help people prepare their answers for an interview. It's not always necessary, but it could be helpful. And also keep in mind, some people like to think about answers a little bit in advance before being able to give you their best responses. In those types of situations, try and identify people like that and send them some of the information beforehand. Or at least ask your interviewee, would it be of benefit if you did that? And then the last um, consideration is for you to consider, is the interview results going to be confidential? And if yes, how will you actually analyze those results in order to keep who gave you the information confidential. So these are the interview type of logistical considerations. So now let's have a look at the interview flow. Now, this is the, the guts of the interview itself. So very important for you to get this right. Now, the very first part of any interview is the opening of the interview. So this is where you need to establish that connection with the people you're talking to. And often we do that by, first of all, do a bit of small talk, um, see how people are and establish a bit of rapport. And then you'll describe the purpose of your interview. You'll confirm your own role as well as their roles. And then try and find out if there's any initial concerns that they might have that might prevent them from fully engaging in the interview. And then, of course, you need to explain to them how will their responses be used. And this will help them to know whether they can give you all of the information or how they want to respond. So once you've done and set it up in the opening, during the interview itself, it's important that you focus on the goals of the interview so stay on track. Also be quite sensitive to the interviewee's willingness to share information. Don't push too hard if you can see that somebody feels uncomfortable. Build and use your soft skills to make them trust you and feel comfortable. Also be mindful that sometimes, you know, People have different ways of giving information and it might require you to come back to a particular interviewee to finish an interview. So there might be multiple sessions required. So make sure that you communicate that to the interviewee as well. If there is any concerns that come up, make sure that you actively address those concerns. And if you're not able to and on the spot do anything about a particular concern, Set the interviewee at ease by telling them that you will follow up and then make sure that you do follow up on any concerns. And of course, do active listening. So really pay attention to what people are saying. And sometimes you can even learn to read a little bit between the lines. And then very importantly, as you go, take written notes or records of what's being said. Then, of course, the last part of the interview. Make sure to check whether there's anything that the interviewee feels that you might have missed or need to explore in more detail. Share your contact details with the interviewee and always invite them to get in touch with you if there's anything else that they think of that you should know. Summarize the session and what you've learned and explain to them what is your next steps. And then of course, make sure to thank them for their time. So in a nutshell, that is the interview flow. It's really good if you can flow according to these particular phases 
in a comprehensive and thoughtful way. Now let's have a look at the last element. So this is about interview follow-up. So remember, once you've done the interview, you will have either a few mind maps worth of notes or you'll have a lot of scribbles on a page. So take all of those notes and go and document this in a structured way and relay it back to your interviewees. Make sure that they get the opportunity to check your notes and confirm and validate that you did capture the information correctly. They may also be able to add additional information to help round off the picture. So these are the six elements that you need to consider when you apply the technique of interviews. What I would like you to take note of in this particular video is that every technique in the Babbock Guide also has a list of strengths and a list of limitations. Before we go through these, I would like to highlight to you that for every technique, it is really very important for you to understand what is the strengths and what are the limitations and make sure you can see why they are strengths or why they are limitations because these would sometimes be weaved into questions within the CCBA and CBAP exams. So this will strengthen your understanding of a particular um, technique, but also it will strengthen your ability to interpret case studies and scenarios. So pay a bit of um, to, uh, attention to this. So specifically then, for this one, some of the key strengths of interviews are the fact that you can get the opportunity to build rapport with your stakeholders on a often a very direct approach, but also one-on-one. -on -one. You get to have a full discussion and understand with detailed explanations why something is the way it is. You can follow up and ask probing questions to make sure you can really deep dive into certain topics. And it also gives interviewees an opportunity to freely express their opinions. Sometimes people do feel more comfortable doing that in a smaller group um, rather than in a workshop. They may not have the confidence to say how they really feel. So although you don't necessarily want to get too deep into any politics or anything like that, it just lends itself very well to people that's a bit more introverted and perhaps do not want to share certain things in front of everybody else. So it's a more intimate way to get information um, through this technique. And then if we look at the limitations of this technique, it's time consuming, as you can imagine. Um, it's a considerable commitment, um, lots of involvement from stakeholders, and you have to do a lot of pre-planning and setting up of meetings. It, it is certainly um, an expensive way to gather requirements and confirming information. There is also a chance sometimes that inadvertently the interviewer might interpreted the information slightly in a subjective way, which might skew the message a little. So this could be a limitation and something that you might want to just be alert about and try and be as objective as you can during interviews. Sometimes the interviewee might be led by the interviewer towards certain outcomes or certain directions. I suggest that just be mindful of this and if you're able to do some of your interviews in collaboration with a colleague, that might make sure that you keep on track um, and do not interfere with leading the interviewee in any way. And then finally, you might not need to train, sorry, you might do, you might need to train people to become really skilled at being an interviewer. Um, and this is an, another aspect that could take time um, and resources to get in place. So that interviews for you from the Babox perspective. 
And I urge you now to look at some of the interviews that you've done in the past. Do you recognize elements that you have actually implemented according to what the Babok think the elements are? And how well did you do that? Did it work really well? In which parts of the interview did you potentially get stumbled um, or face any issues? So that brings me to our slide of over to you. So again, let's have a chat about this in the Facebook group. Let's share some of your, your tips and things that you know works really well for interviews. Um, and make sure that everybody is on the same page. If you've got any examples of really good interview questions, I think that would be fantastic. Please share that with us. And in terms of the exam, is there anything you think we should know in relation to interviews? Right, well, thank you very much. It was great talking to you about interviews. And I look forward to sharing the next technique with you in a future video. Thank you.